mid-October in the deserts, Las Vegas, where so many shows are what you would be enjoying when you come out here. But right now, it's all about NASCAR. That's right. The Xfinity Series is taking on the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It's practice and qualifying of Las Vegas Motor Speedway as we take a look at the playoff points, getting ready to start the round of eight. Steve, does anyone jump out right now as far as your leader? Well, the problem is no. I think, <laughs> I mean, that's really the challenge. No one of these eight, in my opinion, has set themselves apart where they're the absolute favorite. The car that's dominated is the 20 car of Joe Gibbs Racing. He's not in the playoffs. They run multiple drivers. So of these eight, it's go time, right? The round eight, four advance to the championship race. If a win here, then you're automatically in. So this is the big, big weekend. Well, you said wind, but what about wind? Oh, boy. The wind is really howling out here, DJ. Yeah, it, it makes it very difficult to drive these cars. Now, fortunately for the drivers, this is probably kind of a best case scenario with the wind to where it's not blowing across. Uh, so it's, it's going to be in your face going down the back straightaway. And so you can drive in there further, but it's going to carry you with a lot of speed. Now, we've seen all kinds of stuff here, Rick, that, <laughs> through the years. Weird uh, things do happen at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. This was back in 2016 where the wind was blowing so hard. Oh, almost lost a crew member there with uh, the car cover. And then it snowed <laughs> in March in 2022. That's right, snowed. You see all the parkas and the heavy winter coats for the fans that were in attendance. Well, after snow, how about last year? We had an eclipse, eclipse during practice. While they were cars out on track, they actually turned the lights on out here uh, for that. Tyler Reddick enjoyed. Yeah, it had me all messed up because I woke up when it was dark that morning, <laughs> yeah. drove out here, and the sun was shining, and all of a sudden it got dark again. I didn't know what was going on. Time to sleep. Riley Herbst behind the wheel of the 98. Well, you, you asked if anybody jumps out, and not this year has anybody kind of jumped out, but what this car did a year ago here at Las Vegas, he jumped right off the page, came out here and just dominated that race. The Las Vegas native, you know, everybody wants to run good in their hometown. I wonder if the pressure's bigger, DJ, if your hometown is an entertainment town, right? If you're going to be in a marquee <laughs> on the Las Vegas trip, it's the place to do it. Yeah, probably so. And I'm sure he gets a lot of calls about, hey, can you help us get reservations here, <laughs> yeah. get tickets for this? But, uh, yeah, he did put uh, a whipping on the field last year, and you can see he's already fast here today. Uh, wind doesn't seem to be bothering him at all. He's figured it out like he did a year ago, racing against Cole Custer here. It was a big step for this entire Stuart Haas organization. They had had races that they showed some speed, but this was a different level. I mean, this car was untouchable. Came out and dominated, as you mentioned, in his own city. His dad in attendance, you can see the excitement. Just so much goes into that. He's one of the drivers that we're not, we haven't quite got official word on what he'll be doing yeah. next year. Well, we have talked about the wind and Dylan Walsh, you're out there in it. I am, and uh, it's definitely gusty. And I, I think we saw that that graphic that said the gusts of up to 35 miles per hour, and that's going to be the challenge that some of these drivers and teams were were a little bit uh, a little bit cognizant of before we rolled out here. When it, when it gusts like that, that's when it catches you off guard. So I was talking to Sheldon Creed about that. He said there's plenty of times at this racetrack through the years where you just get a uh, an errant gust, and it almost kind of moves the wheel out of your hand. The car gets shoved so far out of the corner. So uh, there may be some surprise moments for some of these drivers uh, throughout the day today in practice with this wind. The other thing, too, to keep an eye on and just be aware of is that we're going to be racing in a little bit uh, different conditions tomorrow, going to be a little bit later in the day and kind of race into the evening hours. So there were some other crew chiefs that uh, made note of the fact with the wind and with that fact that we're going to race later tomorrow, you don't want to get uh, too far down a rabbit hole of chasing a setup because things may be just a little bit different tomorrow. So I don't know if I should be happy or sad for Taylor Gray that just went to the top of the board after what <laughs> that report. No, that's a good point because the wind can change this track. The direction of the wind really can change how the cars handle from one end to the other. Big week for Taylor Gray in this 19 car. He was announced to drive full time for Gibbs next year. The youngster getting a great opportunity. He's only 19 years old. Yeah, he's another one of these young guys that has shown a lot of promise. I mean, you watch him on the racetrack, you know, it, 
Uh, most everybody that comes and gets to this level can go fast, but others do it kind of a little more in a controlled way, and you see them, and you, you see moves that they make, you understand that they know how to race and, and what it's going to be like. So great that he's getting this opportunity next year this early in his career. And I thought he was out there lapping behind Sheldon Creed to kind of get an idea of what it should look like around here, but he's running Creed down from a ways <laughs> back. So that 19 car, more raw speed than the 18 in front of him. Family of racers with Taylor, his older brother Tanner, also running in the Craftsman Truck Series. His dad raced NHRA. His grandfather, Johnny, was a funny car driver. So, I mean, they've yeah. got quite the pedigree. I guess if we said it'd be a cruel joke, but it, if Taylor was to follow Sheldon Creed DeMar, he'd probably finish third in the race. Maybe. Oh, that is a cruel <laughs> that joke. That would be cruel. <laughs> On board right here in the 26th of Corey High Machine. Let's take for a lap here at Las Vegas. Looks like a lot of other mile and a half this deep front stretch. The big difference is the content in each end. So down here in one or two, a much rougher corner. Down here on the bottom is the, the most bumps. You can move up the racetrack, EJ, get away from the bumps. But this end, rough down bottom, smooth up top. Now down here in three and four, overall pretty smooth. Yeah, pretty smooth, and, and we will see this, the groove move around some tomorrow. I think with the cooler temperatures that around the bottom is going to be the preferred way to go. Uh, but as you get laps on the tires, the opportunity is going to be there to, to move up one and even possibly two grooves. But pretty much anywhere you go, you don't have to worry about the bumps. And the biggest thing is just the exit of turn four, and, and uh, we see a lot happen there. And with that long third stage tomorrow, a little green flag pit stop entry practice right there out of Corey Heim, I think. Corey, a 22-year-old, talk about the youth of the sport. It continues to impress. Corey Heim, one of those that is impressing team owners. The Strip, it is a great place to hang out. Enjoy the show. Leland Honeyman Jr. is currently fourth fastest in this practice session. There'll be two different groups that will go out, 15 minutes for this group and then 15 minutes for the second group. There are 20 in this group and 18 in the second group. Leland Honeyman Jr., uh, a part of a caution that came out very timely. Uh, oh, you want to go there, do you? As far as the end of the race, for the Roble, there he is sliding into the tire barrier, not only into, but underneath the tire barrier. Yeah, this was the car that brought the caution out right before overtime last week at the Roble. The timing was a little slow coming out, which made it questionable whether Parker Kligerman, who was leading, got the white flag or didn't get the white flag. But obvious, a required yellow is this 42 car way underneath those tires. So it looked like it had some brake trouble on the 42 there late in the race. So far here today, he's fourth on the speed chart. He's running 18 laps. I'd like to see that, DJ. You know, we don't get a lot of practice as it is, so I like that the cars are close enough. You only get the one set of tires. I mean, he's completing lap 19 right here. That is almost, unless your car is completely missing, you know, has missed the handling, I think laps is really the key for the driver just to get more comfortable before tomorrow. He's got the most laps. He and Riley Herbst. Ryan Ellis behind the wheel of the 43. Once again, Snapchat on board with Ryan. See him come down to the apron as he's going to come on to that access road and make his way to pit road there's daniel die in the 10. colleague racing entry i think the only thing we talked about the wind and so you can adjust what you do as far as turn one when you're downwind down the front straight away here today carrying a little bit of speed but you know with the ability to drive so much further into turn three today um you might have to adjust that a little bit tomorrow, those first few laps, uh, and thinking that, oh, yeah, this is where I was going yesterday, you know, all the way down into the corner. Uh, might not be, you might not have quite the grip that you thought that you had uh, because the wind will help you do a lot of things. We mentioned Taylor Gray with Daniel Dye in this 10 car. He's run partial schedule this year, but he'll be full-time next year with colleagues. So another younger driver getting the opportunity week in and week out. 
And I, you know, it's hard enough. We'll watch Jimmy Johnson try to do it tomorrow in the Cup Series of practice and Sunday in the race. And that's a guy that's won seven championships. To miss weeks and then try to jump behind the wheel and just instantly catch up in a, in a short 15-minute practice to the guys that do it each and every week is very, very difficult. It's even harder when you're a young driver like Daniel. So I'm and excited no to see. Not you know. really a lot of practice. No. I mean, they went from having hour at practice or maybe multiple hours of practice to once COVID happened, no practice. And then, you know, now we get an abbreviated practice here. So these young drivers really don't have a, a lot of chances to hone their skills. Now, you can't go test. You know, there's only scheduled tests that you can be a part of. So, yeah, it, it, it's a, a tougher world, I think, uh, for these young drivers to, to really understand what they need. I understand they, you know, there's some time that they can go do, but there's nothing like being on the racetrack where you know that if you make a mistake, then you pay for it, right. you know. Um, you know, sitting in a simulator, you don't have that. Yeah, you learned a little bit from that, but being out here in real time, uh, and then it's just – Hard for them to, to make those progressions. I, I can't imagine, as I was coming up through, not being able to have the time on the racetrack and that seat time uh, in trying to learn in the way that they do today. We're looking there at Josh Williams for just a moment. Four top ten since he joined Colleague. How about Myatt Snyder? Uh, just the second start he is making in the Xfinity Series this year. Myatt spent uh, a season in Europe in the Euro Series. And a winner in this series, he's won, he won Homestead back when he was in the RCR equipment. So it's good to see Maya back behind the wheel. What's Marty going to do tomorrow? That's his, that's his man. That's his spotter. I know it. Well, I was going to say he's probably going to be dad. Yeah. Well, he, we <laughs> sure he would be. <laughs> but yeah, he'll uh, he'll run tomorrow and then be back at it again Sunday. That's right. Right beside, that's right beside right. Marty as they go up and down pit road. Might is really good. I, I had the chance a few years ago when he had a full-time ride to, to work with him, talk with him. You know, just you know, I was asked to to see if we could help and and you know about certain things. You know, he was a young driver and just trying to learn you know what to do in these situations and things. And it, it was just fascinating to me to have something like that and talk to him. Uh, really a good young man and a good race driver too. Red and black flags displayed for the first group. The 20 drivers that were in this first group now will come to pit road. There'll be 18 in the next group that will come out and work their way around this mile and a half. Second group getting 15 minutes of on track time and that clock has started. They're rolling around the mile and a half here. The fastest lap we saw in the first group 30.36 seconds for a lap around this mile and a half. Now, are we going to see somebody faster than Taylor Gray? Well, this is the top half of last week's race. We have most of our playoff drivers in it. Track now has a little rubber on it. I'm trying to delay until the answer comes up on time. <laughs> to make it looks like I, you know, look like I know what I'm saying. I do think they'll be a little bit faster overall. Well, we're hearing a car we're riding along with bottoming out there, uh, hitting the track, the bumps in one and two. Uh, bumpy first practice for the driver of the 18. Dylan, what happened with uh, Sheldon Tree? Yeah, they're third, or they were third at the end of that first session, but uh, not going to make a qualifying attempt. What happened? Uh, honestly, best Vegas car I've ever had, so uh, I feel optimistic about tomorrow. And I was a little tight, um, so I just need to clean that up for tomorrow, but just felt the engine laid down there at the end of practice. And, that for my guys like been a tough week and we still want to finish the season strong so we'll put a new motor in it for tomorrow and uh, come from the back okay, well encouraging that the car at least felt good for sheldon freed they'll have some work to do tomorrow well he feels bad for his guys because i didn't dj and i don't think you did i don't think anyone had sheldon creed in danger last week he yeah. came in I think over 30 above the cut line. He was a driver that just had to have, quote, one of those easy days, straightforward days. It started with transmission trouble, put him in the back of the pack, and then he got caught up in a wreck. Um, and this guy won. And then this guy won. Yeah, I mean, he lost line. 39 points. Yeah. Lost almost yeah. 40 points. Sam Merritt put a winning performance. It was just a bad combination. We're going to revisit the end of that race from a week ago, and we mentioned it where Leland Honeyman Jr. goes into the tire barrier. The caution comes out just before Parker got to the start finish line. We showed it here. Oh. Near feet, 
Sam Mayer out of turn seven, pushes the 48 up the racetrack and goes on to win the race. Newly designed turn seven, and I didn't really need to change to the front stretch of Kane. I don't think it was worse. I don't think it was better. It was just a change. But that turn five, six, seven combination was everything I was looking for. It put a set of corners at the racetrack. We talk about overtaking, how hard it is to pass sometimes, DJ. I talked to Parker about this, and the problem he said is you can either block left yeah. or block right in turn seven, but if the car behind you is better, and Sam Mayer was much better under braking, you just don't have a defense, and as a race fan, I liked it. it you know, it showed up in that turn seven area. Yeah, actually, both drivers did with Parker leading at that time and Sam in second. They both did exactly what they needed to do entering that turn seven, uh, just as Sam Mayer was so good in making his car turn there. He was able to get the, the run that he needed. Yeah, there was a little rubbing, but, you know, Parker understood there was nothing malicious about that. That was racing, but just two drivers uh, really doing their job. Dylan, you've got more on the 48. Well, and as tough as that was last week for Parker, I talked to him today and I thought, uh, as always, he had a great perspective on things. And he said, you know, redemption is kind of the word that comes to mind for him. He said, you know, I've watched these drivers for years win races just like that in the highest of pressure situations. And I always thought, you know, what an emotional rush that must be. And he said, for like 30 seconds last week, I got to feel that rush. And as painful as ultimately the final result was, that feeling of thinking he had won the race is what is driving him now and driving him more than ever to kind of feel that again. So in his last year of full-time competition, certainly wants to win as badly as ever, uh, and maybe even more so if it's possible after the heartbreak of last week. Parker at the age of 34 has decided, as we just heard from Dylan there, that he will step aside from full-time racing. We mentioned the youth of this sport uh, starting to come in, and that means that there's got to be openings. So one of those openings is the driver of the double zero, Cole Custer. He's going to be racing in the Cup Series next year after winning the Xfinity Series championship a year ago and still in the mix to defend his title this year. He's one of the eight that are fighting still for that championship. Uh, but as one moves on, you get these young drivers that come up and just fill those seats. Jeff Burton and I were just down on the track earlier today and going out in the pace car to make some laps. We saw Cole. He was walking pit road, checking out the pit boxes. This is actually one of the slipperier pit roads. The pit boxes here are very, very slick. Uh, but he was just seemed to be at peace. You know, we talked about the pressure of the playoffs. He was just kind of dialed in, doing what he normally does. Because of the championship a year ago, he ran well the last three races that got him into Phoenix, then goes on to win the championship at Phoenix. Does that give him a little bit of an advantage because he's gone through it? He's experienced the pressure, and he's came out on the other side as the champion. That, and you got to remember, this is a cup winner. So yeah. he, has, he has triumphed on a Sunday. And, and as tough as this series is, this is the stepping stone for what happens on Sundays. That is the, just the absolute top of the mountain, in my opinion. So I think all of that added up. Uh, you know, new father, just a lot of things. Yeah. He's a much different person than he was a year, two, three years ago when he was at, racing on Sundays full time. And I know he's not an old guy, but he's an experienced race car right. driver. There's Brandon Jones in the nine car at the top of the board right now in this second session. Two tenths of a second faster, by the way, than Taylor Gray, Steve. Yeah, that's what I told you. you called it. Happen. You called it. Sure. We've talked today. I, I would have to say that, you know, as he made the move from Joe Gibbs Racing over to Junior Motorsports, these have to be two disappointing seasons for him. Uh, didn't make the playoffs either one. Uh, looked like they had at times some speed and, and opportunities to maybe get a win. Ha hasn't made that happen while he's been there yet, but um, we'll see what uh, he's able to do in these next few races. Maybe this is a thing, this is a track where he has more top tens than anywhere else they've run. So maybe, to your point, put a little bright spot on the last couple of years. Talked about Parker Kligerman, uh, experiencing some of the bumps down the Nellis straightaway, the backstretch here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Make sure to join NASCAR's free rewards program. You can start earning points that turn into member-only rewards. You can earn every time you check in for a race. Visit nascar.com slash fan rewards. That looks like a lot of fun. That's the Nellis Dunes. 
doesn't it doesn't though rick i don't i think a lot of that sand actually was on the track earlier I, it was. <laughs> that just happened yeah uh, that, that wasn't there before today <laughs> chandler smith uh, in the 81 still alive for his championship hopes two wins already this season finished third here in this race earlier this year he's finished top five in all three of his starts I don't see the speed that I expected him to have. I thought he might rival those guys and kind of go to the top, but uh, making a long run here and looks good in that part of it. See the car bouncing around there and those bumps that we talked about? Well, you mentioned a car that doesn't have the speed. I'm a little concerned for the two of Jesse Love. Uh, you know, way down, 15th on the speed chart. Had to come in and make some adjustments reading the radio. It just seems like he was overall just a little tight with the front end, which isn't anything to be panicked about. But as this track continues to take rubber, I think that handling condition is only going to get worse. So if you were, you know, far enough off, you had to make a stop in practice. Just, you know, it's that time of year. There's only eight left. And right now he's seventh of the eight playoff guys when it comes to speed. Yeah, this guy's a lot like Mark Martin, though. When, you, when he takes the track, you're going to see usually at most places, he has no problem finding the speed at tracks. Uh, and so when he's off like this, you have to be concerned. You mentioned Mark Martin winning his Xfinity Series driver here at Las Vegas. I think he's got four wins here in the Xfinity Series. A.J. Allmendinger in the 16, another driver that will be moving to the Cup Series in 2025. Surprisingly winless in the Xfinity Series this year. I know we make a lot about SVG and his playoff run with his road course wins, but they've come at the expense of his teammate, really, A.J. Allmendinger. And he had a, a great Roval performance, I thought, they last did. week. Uh, well, I mean, it's great, laps. except for when you've won the four other starts you have there. Yeah. That second <laughs> looks like just a, such a huge letdown. Yep. And I think that if it wouldn't have been for the situation he was in, he probably would have attacked a little bit more uh, towards the end of that race. Uh, he just looked like he would be able to do that. But he knew that by running and finishing that second, that you know, that was going to move him on in the next round, and that was the most important thing at the time. Three drivers have won here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, A.J. Allmendinger being one of those back in 2021. Speaking of 21, we've got Austin Hill here behind the wheel of the 21. And if you're a fan and you look at his performance at Atlanta where he's won twice this year alone, you say, well, the tracks look the same. They're kind of the same shape, the same size. Let's remind everybody Atlanta had that reconfiguration where they added all of that banking, and now they run kind of like a Speedway-type package, Dylan. So while it looks like the same style of racing, it's anything but Las Vegas and Atlanta now completely different. Absolutely, and it's proving to be a, a tough, uh, tough track to get a handle on right now for the 21 car. Austin came on the radio and said uh, his biggest issue is just initially in the run. He's really tight on fire off, and then it builds free as the run continues. So they actually made an adjustment to try to free him up a little bit more at the beginning of the run to hope uh, that that helps. And the other thing, too, that it is always an option here at Vegas. You can move around a little bit and try and kind of self-medicate your race car. Austin on the radio a little bit a little bit ago said, I don't really care where anybody else is running right now or where I should be running. We need to figure out what to do with our car. So they're trying to get him a little bit happier behind the wheel of the 21. That's an experienced driver that says, I think I could change lanes and make the car drive better, but let's save that for tomorrow. Why we could still make adjustments. Why don't we work on the car? I like that. Andy Street right there in the bottom. Drag racer. Done a nice job. Crew chief in there at RCR. Justin Allgaier, it was very close for Allgaier to be eliminated from the playoffs a week ago and then as quickly as he advances he's number one again <laughs> he jumps right to the top of the list but dj will the real seven car please stand up like where yeah. is justin auger this is a team that normally you know is clean in their performances has speed they've just had a lot of issues yeah yeah at, so we look at him on Saturday, Denny Hamlin and his team on Sunday. I mean, they're kind of mirroring each other. What we saw from both of them, but but we'll speak of Justin Allgaier here. What we saw for the first uh, maybe two-thirds of the regular season was just this is the guy to beat. This is the team. They always have this beat. But, man, they have sure found ways to mess things up and can't do that in these next three races. No, it'll take uh, great performances in all three races to get to Phoenix. Already, we've seen Sammy Smith put together a pretty good lap. As far as the playoff drivers, he has won that first competition. He's the fastest of the playoff drivers. Third, currently. <laughs> you in Las Vegas now, baby. Do you Vegas. feel lucky? 
Las Vegas is the one that really is the marquee when you look at it. Because for us to win, and you know that that's your ticket to make it to Phoenix. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's go! The Xfinity Series this year, I think it's wide open. Yeah, yeah. Have yourself a day. I don't feel like there's a clear cut favorite. Ah. Right now. Way to fight, dude. We're not done with this thing yet. You get hot at the right time. All in, baby. All in. That's how we do it. You definitely can win this thing. Eight drivers think they will be able to win this thing, and this round starts tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's NASCAR Countdown live on the CW at 7.30. It's the first race of the round of eights for the Xfinity Series. On Sunday on NBC, Countdown to Green gets it started at 2 p.m. Eastern and 2.30. Racing for that opportunity to be in Phoenix, the first one. If you can win at this racetrack, that gives you a little bit of a, a foot up on your competition because oh. you can already start thinking about Phoenix and what you can do for that race as we take a look here at what was practice that just finished. Yeah, you can see not uh, only three of the fastest uh, are in the playoffs are still part of the round of eight. And if I, you talk about winning here. It's also important for the other seven that might that aren't going to win if one of our playoff drivers does win. But you, you can't if you start off with a bad race here, lose points. It is really hard to make it up at, at Miami and Martinsville coming up. Dylan. Taylor Gray, you see him second on the board at the end of practice. Certainly could be a, a playoff spoiler come tomorrow. So uh, what would you like about your race car there? Seemed like it was working well. Yeah, Dylan, I thought uh, thought we fired off really good there. The boys uh, at Joe Gibbs Racing bought me a really fast uh, Operation 3 GR Supra. So excited to get going here. Qualifying is always uh, pretty interesting, especially a place like this. It's, uh, it's hammer down. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Congratulations are in order as well. Full-time next year in the Xfinity Series with Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, Ty Gibbs is going to be officially listed as your owner. So what are you looking forward to most about being full-time next year? Yeah, I'm excited just to, to be able to run these cars every week and, and get more experience with my guys and, and to have fun. These cars are so much fun to drive, and uh, it's fun to slide around every once in a while. So yeah, I'm excited. All right, it'd be great to have Taylor Gray around a little bit more next year in the Xfinity Series. Every race, he'll be running for a championship next year. First out onto the track will be Ryan Vargas. He's been competing full time in the NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series uh, this year, making his fourth Xfinity Series start of 2024. Hey, I've missed Ryan around. He's just one of those guys you run into on pit road or in the garage area. He just makes your day better. I mean, it doesn't matter speed, no speed, what equipment he's in. He's just always happy. Seems like he's full of life, full of energy, enjoys the opportunity. Up the racetrack, is that going to be the fastest way around this racetrack? So I think down here in three and four, you want to be on the white line. But DJ, one and two, it's just a question of where you're going to commit. It's bumpier at the bottom. I think if you get through the bumps, it's faster. But it's way more risk versus just committing to be in the second lane. Yeah, to, if you can make a, a good wide entry, a, a good arc into turn one and miss those first couple, then you only have to deal with a couple of bumps after that. And you've kind of got your car headed in the right direction. Ryan Vargas. That was a in, big if. In nice. practice <laughs> yes. was 31.62, and he goes out 30.81. So a big pickup for Vargas on his qualifying run. Yeah, think about that, Rick. I mean, you know, you went out there in practice. Now you have to go that much faster. You have to find a place. I mean, you look at the throttle application. I mean, right here, Daniel died barely oh. out of the throttle. Catching it. Oh, boy. So the bumps were not kind to him. Yeah, exactly. That car was just yawed out from the start, but the bumps then take it. When you get your car in that position right there, I know he made kind of a shallow entry into that. I was watching him go into turn one. When you do that, then you're all of a sudden having to turn the wheel to make it happen, and then you start hitting those bumps. And this is crazy, but now that you've added the tape, the car itself is way more aerodynamic efficient. It has way more downforce, way less drag. Wow, that is a yeah. big save right there. But my point with all of that about the arrow is the wind is going to affect this automobile more than one that's in race trim. When you get closer to the level of grip and you add that tape, you're now dependent on that downforce. So going down into turn one, like Gay says right here, that tailwind, you have the least amount of downforce really for the corner. This is Joey Gase, uh, 15 starts at this racetrack. He's got a best finish of 15th. They came back in 2018. 
See, he kind of opted to stay above those bumps. Didn't didn't deal with that. But you know, you're also making the racetrack a little bit longer. You don't have quite the grip uh, when you move up a lane or a lane and a half. And when you're trying to go fast, that makes a big difference. And he's the slowest so far. Third of three. Dylan. Well, we found Parker Kligerman down here as he awaits his turn to qualify. So we saw a couple moments in practice, seen some moments in qualifying the win. We've talked a lot about it. How difficult is it to kind of gauge when it's going to blow and, and what the strength of it will be? Yeah, I, Dylan, you pointed out the wind. It just makes it highly inconsistent. So you'll go off into one one time with a huge tailwind. I think we're six or seven mile an hour faster than we were here in the past. And one time it'll stick, and the next time you're like, oh, what's that? So that's just the wind being inconsistent. It helps you into three in terms of the, t the headwind, adding a ton of grip, but you lose that on the exit. So just dynamic, but, you know, our spike like Cooler Chevy, pretty sporty. I, uh, that's the best we've been here. So hopefully we can keep that up. He has his fastest fin the internet in this qualifying lap. It's going to take major commitment. This lap, spring or fall, is always a hell of a commitment on the throttle carrying throttle all the way through one and in, in three and four and if we can do that hopefully get a good qualifying effort start up front and maybe go to one of those trophies we came so close to last week that's right good luck saw the 35 there the 51 year old out of japan akanori ogata was fourth fastest of the four that have gone yeah, he'll be making his first mile and a half start this year he was at martinsville and daytona with his two starts here's Mike snyder on the track what do you expect from Mayan Snyder in this performance when you don't, I mean, you guys have talked about it, when you're not behind the wheel every week, it's difficult to go out there. So what kind of goals can you set for yourself? I think for Mayan, it's really hard to understand what this car has available for him. I think if I'm Mayan, I'm, I'm really asking the team what they think the car's performance should be, and Mayan can only drive the car to its limit. That'll be his key, is not try to get behind the wheel in his limited starts, just try to do too much. Third fastest for Maya Snyder. And we saw Ogata in the 35. He got out of shape there. Actually went wow. left, left front tire was below the white line there. That's usually not a very good thing. No. But he managed to at least save it. Garrett Smithley behind the wheel of the 45. Look at that lap by Vargas still holding up. Mm -hmm. Five cars have run, and he's still the fastest. Smithley trending slower as well. Smithley is third fastest, so just a little bit quicker than Snyder there, but uh, still behind Daniel Dye. And as you mentioned, Vargas, fastest lap. It's like a Harvick throwback scheme. I it does look like here. it, doesn't it? Well, you better be good then. If you're going to bring a Harvick throwback <laughs> scheme about anywhere, you better have some pace. Blaine Perkins. Down the back stretch, that's into the wind here in Vegas. I don't know if it's gone down at all. I know the flag isn't uh, standing at attention like it was earlier. Rick, you noticed it, it, it was so hard earlier at the pole. Yeah, the pole was bending. Yeah, so it has calmed down a little bit. Perkins goes fifth quickest on his qualifying effort. You know, I heard Parker talk about the commitments that you have to make as a driver going out here for one lap of qualifying with the elements, not knowing exactly how much push you're going to get down into turn one. The only thing that you can hope for as a driver that your level of grip matches your level of commitment uh, because if it doesn't then you're going to be busy for a second <laughs> good lap right here for jj ailey so far he did a nice job of running one and two kind of opening the wheel up over those bumps as you mentioned dj let the car just kind of skate across them straighter than others and the gas good you can see really good lap here going to be the quickest so far he has 18 starts, a lot of experience at this track. Good lap. Yaley, 30-54. So fastest lap we have seen of the eight that have been out on the track. This will be a big test right here. Corey Hyman is 26. I think he's going to show us if this track has the pace that we think it might have. Even though he didn't really show it in practice, only a 30-73, I would imagine this car should be close to a 30 flat. Now he had talked about his car bottoming out. You can hear it there dragging a little bit too, Steve. Yeah, and you have to really hit the ground over those bumps 
to stay as low as possible at this end, right? You just get less travel. Yeah, he's had a lot of talent, this young man. He's uh, looked for somebody to keep him wrapped up in a good ride. He is cup level material for sure. Six truck wins already. He's leading the points in the Craftsman Truck Series. Okay, that's a really impressive lap. Huge lap for Corey Heim, 29.87. I think, Steve, you mentioned this was going to be the yardstick, what everyone will compare themselves to. Dylan Lupton out there in the 15. Dylan will be making his third start. It's actually third consecutive. He raced at Talladega, then the Roval, and now here. a pretty good lap for Dylan also. If, yeah, if he had gone in front of Heim, we would be commenting because it would be <laughs> in, the, in the green, but yeah. fortunately went after Heim. 30-18, nice lap. Yeah. P2. P2 for Dylan Lupton in his qualifying run. Again, 10 have already gone, and there are 38 cars here. A.J. Allmendinger uh, getting a little last-minute advice. Qualifying, continuing for the Xfinity Series. Right now it's Brennan Poole that is going to be on the clock. The 33-year-old from Texas was 19th at this race earlier this year. Dylan. Jesse Love is uh, awaiting his turn to qualify as well. So you made your first mile and a half start here in the spring. Here we are, uh, you know, several months removed from that. How much do you feel like you've learned about these types of racetracks over the course of this year? Yeah, just a ton. Everything from, like, obviously mistakes not to make, whether it be, like, kind of pit road or qualifying, get up to speed. Those are kind of two things I did wrong when I was a rookie. You know, I'm still a rookie, right? But when I came in for the first time early in the spring and um, all the way down to the, the nitty-gritty stuff, you know, like kind of understanding what balance you have to have to be good later on. And I honestly feel like my number two wheel and Chevrolet Camaro is, is really good. I honestly feel um, pretty pumped about it. A little bit perplexed. I feel like... Even though it feels really good, we need a little bit of, of speed. So um, I just think we're going to be a little bit too tight. And obviously, that's going to compound when the rubber gets laid down and it gets a little bit warmer tomorrow. So um, yeah, that's going to free it up a little bit. And I always trust myself to go lay down a good lap in qualifying and hopefully get some track position for tomorrow. Thanks, Jesse. Ryan Ellis, uh, we saw it on the wheel there, cool. going through one and two. Yeah, it, he has a really rough ride. You can see even down the back straightaway where there are a few bumps uh, down there. Harvey, really a little bit violent, the bumps, more so than what we've seen some others. A little water yeah. right there coming out of the right side. It's a little Over rare. Floor. Yeah, normally to get him cool enough that he could run one lap, no problem. Ellis's lap puts him ninth of the 12 that have gone. Josh Williams. Josh moved over to Colleague Racing. You mentioned earlier, four top ten finishes yeah. since being a part of the Colleague team. And, you know, they've fallen a little short of what I expected out of what Josh was going to do over here at the 11. You know, we talked about the nine of Brendan Jones Jr. Motorsports. You know, I don't know if I had a win on the, on the list for Josh Williams, but I did expect maybe just a little bit more out of this team. Um... But that just shows just how competitive this series yeah. is. Dylan. Cole Custer is one of the eight playoff drivers remaining with a shot at a championship run in Phoenix in a few weeks. How'd you feel about uh, your race car you have here in Las Vegas? I felt good about it. I felt like our speed looked pretty solid and was a little bit tight. So we'll probably get a little bit freer for tomorrow. But um, our JT and all our guys did a great job and everybody back at the shop at SHR. So um, hopefully get this 3D Systems Ford Mustang up front for qualifying, um, get some good stage points. But um, I know we have the speed. It's just a matter of putting it all together. Good looking race car as well, as he said, with 3D systems on the side. And Custer was good here in the spring as well. Here comes the 91 of Kyle Weatherman. Weatherman down to the apron. And he is fourth fastest. It shows you how good that lap is by Corey High, right? Six tenths of a second off, and he's still just fourth fastest. As we get later into this, 
qualifying session, we see some of those playoff drivers. That'll be a big test for Heim. They all go last, so they will be the last ones on the track for qualifying. Yeah, and even as we get towards the end before those eight go, uh, you got two fast cars and Brandon Jones and Parker Kligerman that will be coming up. And they both turned really good laps in practice. Dawson Cram, the 23-year-old out of Mooresville, North Carolina, behind the wheel of the 92. Dawson goes fourth quickest as he'll push Kyle Weatherman down a spot. We replayed the wreck last week at the Roval, but we should talk about the, the run Leland Hundeman had here. Las Vegas in the spring, finished 18th. That's his best mile and a half finish. You know, so much is focused at the front of these fields and the cars that are racing into the playoffs and trying to advance and trying to win a championship. But there are multiple races with the, throughout the field, whether it's experience with the driver, finances of the race team. And, when, you know, when you come back to a place, DJ, whatever that finish might be, but a place that you feel like you have performed at your best or better than perhaps other tracks, it always feels good to kind of drive in the tunnel, see if you can, you know, regain whatever you had the last time you were there. Yeah, and, you, and that's that's where you have to know as a driver uh, and as a team uh, the expectations. You know, if you come in here and you've got these, you know, goals that you everybody everybody wants to try to win, but you you that's not possible for most unless circumstances get that. So understanding what it is that you're trying to accomplish whenever you show up at the track and be the best of that group. Matt De Benedetto behind the wheel of the 38, and he is on the clock while he's running his lap. Let's go back to Dylan with a guy who I would say got a first down in the red zone after uh, the Roval, so he's got a new life going for this championship. Well, I think he, he certainly would have to feel that way. I want to ask Justin, though, about uh, we see the Brandt logo on his car almost every weekend, and we, we of course, have seen a lot of the uh, hurricane relief efforts and disaster re relief efforts. Rick Brandt, everybody at Brandt is doing something real cool. Can you just explain what that is? Yeah, so Brandon and Jared got together as, along with Junior Motorsports, and they actually uh, traveled in fresh water for everybody that's dealing with with the hurricanes. And, you know, it's been kind of a crazy couple of weeks, not only with um, both hurricanes coming through, but affecting, you know, a lot of Western North Carolina, you know, a lot of the folks that are in the sport, but also to employees and, and customers of, of Brandon, especially in the Florida and Georgia areas. And so, you know, they came together, they were able to get some water in there. All of our partners have done an amazing job with hurricane relief and getting uh, goods and supplies brought in. The amount of stuff that's come through our shop even has is, is been incredible. So, you know, this isn't a short-term problem. This is a long-term problem, and this is something that's going to last on for uh, probably a, a couple of generations, really, to be honest with you. And so to see our, our partners come together and, and really support those that are in need right now has been really, really special to me. You know, we deal with everything on the racetrack. You know, it's been a crazy couple of weeks, and obviously playoffs are in full swing. You, you, you want to have things go your way, but when you're thinking about those folks that uh, literally have lost everything, it, it puts a lot of perspective into what we're doing every week. And so we're uh, Hopefully going to go out there, have a little bit of speed and qualifying, and uh, take this brand fresh on Gold Trigger Camaro to the front and, and uh, have some luck and, and uh, have things go our way. Yeah, good perspective for sure. Thanks, Justin. Dylan, you might want to tell Allgaier to watch that 19 up to speed. I know it doesn't look perfect right here, but he ran the top of three and four coming to the green, and it was, or, and it was in the green. So he yes. definitely carried more speed to the front stretch. Now he's running the bottom the shorter way around. We'll see DGF more guys do that, that high three and four. Yeah, you can see what he picked up there uh, with the help of the wind off of turn four and got him to the top of the list. Fastest lap, that's Taylor Gray. And the 2985 is now the number that everyone will be shooting for. Riley Herbst with the same approach. Not quite as high, the third lane instead of the fourth lane. We'll see how the lap time, and as you can see, a little slower. Yeah, and, it, and what was impressive about Taylor Ray there with his, as I watched him, you come off a of turn two, you hit that headwind. Most people are losing time by the time they get to turn three. He actually picked up and was ahead, and you see Riley Herbst here. Great lap going right now. Yeah, a little left rear tire smoke over the bump. Probably won't see that as much down here in three and four. That's a perfect example of the travel difference, right? Smokes at one end because the car bounces over that bump and gets compressed into the track more. Three and four, no smoke because the car doesn't travel as much in a 29.62. Oh, huge lap. And again, he likes this place. Uh, home race for Riley Herbst. 
There was a little bit of that tire smoke Steve talked about during his lap, but it didn't slow him down. Fastest lap so far. Qualifying continuing from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. This is the first race of the round of eight. Eight championship drivers will be still fighting for that title. Haven't got to them yet. They are going to finish up this qualifying session. It's Jeremy Clements' turn on the track. Clements had a good run back, ran 12th at Bristol. What a stage at the short track. A good run for the 51 car. We'll see if he can match that speed out here in Vegas. Dylan. Chandler Smith is one of those playoff cars that uh, has been doing things pretty well the last few weeks. Six straight top five last week at the Roval. So uh, what things is this team doing right? Do you feel like you guys are peaking at the right time? I don't know. We'll let, we'll let all the people that do analytics and all that say if we are or not. But uh, I'm super happy with all the men and women at Joe Gibbs Racing. They've been uh, bringing really fast GR Supers week in and week out for me to drive. Uh, and this weekend's no different. I feel like our GR Super is as fast as Xfinity Internet today, and uh, hopefully we can go showcase that in qualifying. He's been really fast the last few weeks, but still is fourth on the playoff cut line and goes out fourth from the end here in qualifying. And right now it is a Ford fastest with Riley Herbst, two Toyotas with Gray and Heim, and then Chevrolet with Jeremy Clements just uh, putting that Chevy up there in the top five and fourth as we see Kyle Sieg behind the wheel of the 39. Discussed this a little bit last week. Ryan is behind the wheel of the 28 this week. They're trying to make sure they get the best points for these teams uh, going forward at the end of the year and then looking forward to next year. And the owner points just establish so much in the sport when it comes to payouts. And next year, if you get rain early in the year, it can really affect the starting lineup of races. Kyle C goes sixth quickest in the 39. Yep, good lap for him. We saw the other Sieg brother this morning down in Las Vegas wandering through the casino. He was trying to find a cup of coffee. He was trying to find a cup of coffee. I was sitting in a location, so I was easy to run into. So he stopped <laughs> and said hello on the way by. He said hello. I wasn't moving. Good lap yeah, for the 28. Four. Really good lap. I mean, that Riley Hurts lap, that's faster than the last two poles, right? That 62 would have sat on the pole or been faster than the pole the last two races here. So for C to come out there and only be basically a tenth off, that's a great lap. Now we've got Jeb Burton on the clock and immediately in the green to start his lap. Really did a great job coming to the green, getting through three and four. You know what he didn't or wasn't able to do is what you talked about. He couldn't get that arc in and go around the bumps. He kind of had to drive in straight and over them. And you just ask your car to do a whole lot when you hit him at that angle. But once again, he knows he wants to go around it. He can only put the car in a position where he feels it will succeed. Jeff Burton, his lap is fifth quickest of the 24 that have been on track and Dylan you've got the most recent winner with you that's right that's Sam Mayer won last week in Charlotte at the Roval so uh, that win obviously carried a, lo a lot of importance but just from a team morale standpoint to execute a day like that how big was that for you guys moving forward yeah I mean it was a season defining moment for sure uh, we don't win and we're not in the playoffs still so it was a really big deal obviously we had a car as fast like Spinny internet right there our QPS Chevrolet was really good our 10X Chevrolet this week uh, definitely took a little bit of work and practice to get it to where we want it to be, but I think now that uh, we kind of looked at some film and stuff like that for qualifying, I think we're going to be going to be in a good spot. Thanks, Sam. You know what impressed me most as we Parker Rutt's lap finished his lap of that Sam Mayer-Parker Kligerman battle is with everything on the line, the younger drivers. Remember, Sam Mayer is a young guy behind the wheel, 21 years old. He was faster than Parker in those closing laps and even had a point into the last chicane where he passed him and Parker passed him back. we have I think we've lost a little bit of that. It's become okay to run each other over and yeah. send each other off the racetrack. But then here are two young guys that that, that was a must win for both of those guys. Mm -hmm. And they delivered a great battle to the race fan. Yeah, wonderful show. Anthony Alfredo, uh, about two tenths of a second, two and a half tenths off the pace of Riley Herbst. 
a little more ground through three and four. And his sixth quickest. Well, I think this car coming right here has a real chance. If he's anywhere near as good as he was in practice, I'm not sure what he can run, but I think if you're Riley Herbst, you're keeping a good eye on the racetrack to see how fast this nine of Brandon Jones is. It'll be interesting to see here with that. Can he back that? I mean, that was so fast, and you can see he's in the green right now. The exit right here is going to determine a lot. If you can carry that speed, the wind's not going to affect you quite as much. He's holding steady right now with a little over a tenth of a second. He was one of the few that went to the apron to start his lap. So instead of where we normally see him finish the yep. lap down on the apron, he started his lap down on the apron to make it as short as possible. He hasn't seen the front stretch yet. No. He's run the apron <laughs> both times through. That great lap. I loved how that car looked around one and two. He did just what you asked him to do, Dale. Big arc around the bumps, got the car to the white line very late past the bumps and helped that exit you talked about. We'll see what Parker can do to match it. Liked his car when we heard him in his interview. Stayed on the racing surface through the front stretch and just about yep. a tenth of a second off. Yeah, but you can see he wasn't quite as wide as what Brandon Jones was. That made him turn the wheel, and when you're turning the wheel there and you hit those bumps, then that you get one of two things. If, if you try to turn the wheel, then the back end will kick out, and then if you just let it go, you're up the racetrack and losing a little bit of time. He's going to be about three tenths of a second slower than Brandon Jones, and that puts him fourth so far. Three, four, good lap. Yeah, still a good lap. I mean, it's getting out. I mean, it, this is not easy. You go in that day, you've got one lap to get it done. You know, you want to give everything. You don't want to come back in and said, oh, man, if I would have just done this a little bit more, then might have uh, might have helped a couple of spots. Closing in on the playoff drivers. Again, Parker Kligerman was just eliminated from the playoffs last week, as was SVG, Shane Van Gisbergen. Like he was going to be moving on. I um, think he was the driver to beat till they made the decision to leave their driver out there. <laughs> yes. On tires that, as others came and got theirs. So SVG and his qualifying run is top 10. It's eighth fastest. When we come back, it is time for the playoff drivers to take to the mile and a half. In a city of entertainment, it's NASCAR that takes center stage when we come out to Las Vegas. And tomorrow it will be the Xfinity Series that will be first on the track. Be the big show here this weekend. You win and you advance to Phoenix. And that is what all of these drivers that are about to go, that's their goal. If they could win here in Las Vegas tomorrow afternoon, they will have two more weeks to prepare and get ready for that championship race in Phoenix. If you don't, you've got to fight your way to be a part of the championship four. Youngest of the playoff drivers in his first playoff experience, Jesse Love in the two. Ooh. He got a little tire rub in three and yeah. four. This is gonna, we're going to see some smoke down here in one and two. Watch this left rear tire. He held it out there a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of smoke. Good corner, though. A tenth of a second off. Don't worry about the smoke. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. About oh. My guy. That's, that's easy good. to say. Yeah, you crew chief. Yeah, Danny yeah. Stockman. That's what I like to tell. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't let that distract you. You're doing a great job, having a great lap. <laughs> uh -oh. Like that. This is a great lap for Jesse Love. He's third fastest at a 29.63. I mean, it's right front, left rear. They're all smoking. Don't worry about that. Yeah, don't worry about it. Sammy Smith was the fastest in practice of the playoff drivers. Let's see if he can convert in this qualifying run. Mm, didn't get it to the bottom oh. there. That's going to hurt right here. All the way off the corner, and then it's just going to, the time's going to go up as he goes down against the wind. And he just knows it, right? There's yeah. nothing. He's like, oh, man. Did a better job here, though. Yeah, he did. 
quick learn. Yeah, we well, yeah, are. You know, the problem is you see him lose the time because he just has to slow down a little more than he wants to for the car to get there. Yeah, outstanding lap. Great adjustment. That's yes. a really good adjustment. To so your point about the commitment, right? So he goes into turn one with pole speed commitment. The car doesn't get where he wants it to be. Then on the back he has to recalibrate and say, okay, I can drive that. I can make it do it again just to prove to everybody the car is tight, or I can go in a little slower, get all the way to the bottom, and improve my lap. It's really well done. Dale Jr. is going to be happy if he's watching. One, two, with a couple cars yet to qualify out of his camp. Of course he's watching. It's his cars out here on the racetrack. Well, he's 50 now. I didn't know if we're in his nap window. <laughs> he or I just. It's possible he could be in a nap window as we have Cole Custer on track. I love this shot. Looking back at the focus here. Hitting the track. With as little as he's out of the gas, it's hard to believe he can be even in the red, but he is, although good exit speed. That's one of those that you hear. He's just rolling out of the throttle, never completely out, keeps it pulling. And I think that's what's helping him run this lap right here. Oh, that was close. 29.47. It's currently P2. Good job. I can't believe we're this far into this qualifying session with practice and have yet to really talk about this guy, Eric Amarola in the 20. One at Martinsville in Kansas. Talk about experience, nearly 30 starts across all three series here. And this 20 car. Mm, great success. I mean, you get a win, you get a win, you get a win. Every guy behind the wheel seems like at least has a couple, man. John Hunter Nemechek was behind the wheel of the 20 earlier this year when this car was here at Vegas and won. Yeah, I'm, a little surprised by yeah. the, I'm a little surprised by the speed. I thought it would be more competitive than this. Yeah, way up the track in turn one and two, just through the bumps and up high. Couldn't, just couldn't make it ever turn on the exit of that corner. Lost three and a half tenths up there. Yeah, that's surprising. But, you know, eighth. Still good enough. It didn't have a catastrophic incident. Didn't hit the wall. You know, he could win from there. All right. We've seen the junior motorsports car be really good. A lot of speed. And Justin Allgaier takes to the higher side here. He looked committed to the middle. He didn't even look he like did. he was thinking bottom. About two tenths of a second off right now with Jimmy Brandon Jones' has run. And look, if you don't love your car over the bumps, I'm kind of okay with that. You go in there and it bounces and you have to get completely out of the gas, you're qualifying 25th, yeah. 28th. You've almost guaranteed to not get stage one stage points. He's fourth, right? So I know we're going to celebrate the pole winner, and that's a goal. But for the seven car, he goes, man, if I restart, you know, he's going to start in the top ten of this race. He can easily score points. Yeah, and worse yet, I mean, you hit those bumps wrong, you're sideways, then you're in the wall, and you're bringing out a backup. No, no time for that right now. Chandler Smith, you see the bumps affecting that race car. And the highest Toyota at the moment is Almirola in ninth at a 29.81. I believe Smith's going to be better than that. Yeah, this looks faster. A tenth of a second off Brandon Jones. And he is third fastest. So it's Chevy Ford Toyota right now, the top three. And if you're just kind of dialing in, you don't see the 18 of Sheldon Creed anywhere. Engine issues for the 18. He has to change a motor, so we, he won't get a qualifying attempt. So only three left to go. B.J. Allmendinger on the clock and a really good entry to turn one. Yeah, unfortunately, Loses. too good. Yeah. Too much speed for, the, for whatever the car's handling situation was. It did not work. Yeah, his grip level didn't come close to matching no. his commitment down in there. Not at all. And that's going to show as he's about three tenths of a second slower than what Jones has put up. Still okay. I think that's it. You know, the, the, the laps by those front two or three cars are just so impressive. I mean, it's two tenths from first to six. That's a bigger gap than normal. Two to go. Austin Hill and Sam Mayer, the final two in qualifying. 
He wasn't real happy with his car in practice. Uh, his teammate Jesse Love picked things up, but you, wow. Whoa. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. He is bouncing around. You can see the front tires turned there. It's not going anywhere close to where he wanted to be. No, this car's driving him. You know, and that's what I mean yeah. when a driver yeah. kind of gets it pointed and then just continues to react. He's not putting the car, even down here, we've seen very little car movement. The back of this 21 car, very unstable. Six tenths of a second slower than Jones. That's going to put him all the way down in 16th. And that's what we talked about with the playoff driver. 16th, first stage, only 45 laps. You don't have to stop for fuel. You don't have to have a pit stop. If it runs green, can he drive inside of the top five, six, seven, or will this playoff effort hurt him in the points? Final driver on the clock. And Sam Mayer, in one of the junior motorsports entries. Okay, he took a shallow entry in there. The car didn't bounce around, and he just let it drive straight up off the corner there. About a tenth and a half here as he goes into turn three. And smooth three and four for Sam Mayer, but smooth isn't going to be fast enough. And Sam Mayer is going to start fourth in tomorrow's race. Good job. And that means that Brandon Jones has won the pole, his 12th career poll in the Xfinity Series in this his 299th start. Dylan. And he gets around this racetrack uh, as well statistically as he gets around any racetrack. So do you have the feel in your race car right now that uh, you know you need for tomorrow? Well, this uh, Polonis Menard Chevrolet is definitely as fast as the internet, man. We were uh, first practice, first qualifying. We've got one more one to go get tomorrow. So uh, really proud of these guys. They're really doing a good job. This is just a testimony to how much time we really put in during the week, I think, of showing up here prepared, knowing where we need to be on the track and knowing how much throttle this place is going to have. I expected a little bit colder temperatures today. Uh, the wind's been a little bit crazy as well, but I knew that was going to be a lot of throttle that, uh, for, for today, and, and I think that lap number uh, pretty much showed that. So excited for the race tomorrow with these guys. I think it's going to be a really good one, and uh, it's never too late, man. We're still trying to just click off and get that one uh, that one win. We've had some really good momentum here these past couple races, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, what does a day like today do for that? Just You have to run the race, and anything can happen, but having a clean sweep does a lot. Yeah, it certainly does, and I think this place, too, is a lot of track position. It is certainly hard once you do get behind cars to start to pass. There is opportunity at this racetrack to move around, um, but it is tough, too, because all these guys are going to be really quick tomorrow, so you're going to be the one that's wanting to, to pace the, the field and uh, to kind of control that uh, of where they're going to go. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that we've got clean air for the morning. Brandon Jones on the pole tomorrow for the Xfinity race at Las Vegas. It'd we be heard a popular win, Rick, I think, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I... I, I it's been a long two years. I'd love right. to see Brandon win. Right. And that's that was one of the things I was going to say is you, you hear him say, you know, we got to get that win. He's won five times in the Xfinity Series. He knows how to win, but there's been a huge drought. All of last year, he didn't get to victory lane. And I think a lot of people were wondering, how is that possible? I mean, he's in very good equipment. He's a great race car driver, and they're just not clicking. And so potentially now his fourth pull already this year. Could it happen here in Las Vegas? Let's take a look at the starting grid. So Jones, a non-playoff driver, wins the pole, and then you see uh, playoffs next to all the names here, with the exception of Riley Herbst, that fill up the first four rows. This is what I expect the entire round eight to look like, DJ. Playoff yeah. cars just inside the top ten, putting the pressure on one another. Yeah, only one driver of those eight that's outside of the, the top nine. Um, so the, the playoff driver stepped up, but Austin Hill, unfortunately, didn't have that uh, speed to get himself in there. Good lap by Ryan Sieg there in row five. A little surprising out of Eric Amarola, row six. And then you mentioned Austin Hill all the way back here, row nine, 17th. So he'll be the farthest back in the field of all the playoff drivers. Now, the good thing is you talked about trying to get stage points there. If they can you know, get the handling to his liking here, you, you do have time, and there's room on this racetrack to maneuver around and make passes and make your way inside that top ten. And we go through the rest of the field. 38 cars will start tomorrow's race. Again, Sheldon Creed not being able to qualify. They had an engine expire on him in practice. And so they will have to start at the back of this field. Dylan. Cole Custer will join Brandon Jones on the front row tomorrow. He qualified in the second spot. Uh, what did you think of your lap? Did you have anything left in it, or was that uh, is that what it had? 
Uh, I maybe could have gotten a little bit more. There's always room for, you know, four hundredths or whatever it was, but uh, it was just really fast. I mean, the track picked up a lot of grip for whatever reason and compared to times in the past. And I mean, that, that Roush Yates motor, it was screaming down the backstretch. It was, we were really carrying a lot of speed that, that qualifying session, but hopefully get 3D systems a, a good run tomorrow. I got a fast car, so um, can't thank them enough for being on it, but uh, hopefully have a good run. This track, you can move around a lot. You can, you can run different lines, but how important is qualifying up front just for the job that you guys have to do tomorrow? It's huge. I mean, it just sets you up for stage points, obviously. But, uh, I mean, it's going to be a different race just because it's going to go into night a little bit tomorrow. So um, we've seen everybody slipping and sliding around here the last couple of years, but it might be a little bit of a different race this time. So um, it'll be interesting, but we'll try and keep up with it. Good starting spot for Cole Custer. He'll roll off second tomorrow. He mentioned the stage points. And again, just a reminder, at the end of stage one and end of stage two, uh, points are paid for those top 10 drivers. It has taken, on average, 40 points per race for someone to advance into that championship four in Phoenix. That's almost like a win. So you've yeah. got to get some of those stage points to help you get to that number so you can advance to Phoenix. Well, the fact is that if we get three of these eight to win these three races, then there's going to be at least one spot over right. yeah, if they happen not to win uh, that. So you have to go gather points every way that you possibly can. Yeah, I know that drivers don't like talking about having to get points and racing for points, but you have to take advantage of these opportunities because the, the main focus right now is how do I become a part of the championship four here in four weeks in Phoenix. I think you have to start the weekend and start the race thinking it's going to require a win, but there may be a moment on a restart or when you're three wide going into turn three where you have to ask yourself is the reward of this win versus the risk you mentioned how many points it averages if you wreck with two or three to go and give up all of those points now you put yourself where you have to win one of the next two races and that's the pressure all eight of these drivers are going to be under and again it's the xfinity series that is taking on the track tomorrow the cup series will also be starting their round of eight here in vegas Three in a row and big. The chink, baby. How about this, A-Rose? Woo! Yeah, boy! Yeah! Still kind of smoky guy today, bud. Woo! This is your opportunity to make it to the final four. Yeah! Eva, Las Vegas, baby! Hell yeah, nice job. Ah! It's a, uh, let's go get a championship, baby! Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check it back. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, good job, guys. Go to Phoenix, boys. The road to Phoenix goes through Las Vegas, and tomorrow it will be on the CW for the Xfinity Series. It starts off with NASCAR Countdown live at 7 and then 7.30. The Xfinity Series will find out if one of the eight playoff drivers can win their way into that race in Phoenix. On Sunday, it's the Cup Series turn. Countdown to green at 2 o'clock and racing just after. Dylan. Sam Mayer qualified in the fourth spot. That's where he'll roll off for tomorrow's 302-mile race here in the Xfinity Series. So uh, what would you think about your lap in your race car there? Yeah, definitely a lot better than practice. We, uh, we said going into it that we kind of learned a lot from practice and we're able to kind of apply it to even tomorrow, but uh, obviously qualifying today. So Really proud of my uh, 10X Health uh, guys that work on this thing and uh, <laughs> really put me in a good spot here. So I'm really excited to roll off and uh, hopefully be as fast as, as Xfinity in there tomorrow. You always want to go for race wins, obviously, but but stage points are, are just as important, too. So uh, what's the mindset for you early on tomorrow? How do you how do you keep your car up front? What do you have to do? Yeah, for sure. And, and we kind of want to do what we did in the first round and is have a really good first race and put ourselves in position uh, to go out there and maybe steal one, uh, the other two. So uh, just looking to stay up kind of close to where we are now. And maybe if we're in a good spot at the end, we can pounce on it. Thanks, Sam. Two mile and a half racetracks back to back for him. I love what the postseason does in every sport, right? It, it, we talk a lot about the cars and the speed and the technology, but in the end, it's the human performance. How can a athlete find the next level of performance when the pressure ramps up? And what I love about it in the Xfinity Series, DJ, is it's a wave of younger drivers or yeah. just less experienced drivers. And, and I do love that this format matches Cup because I think it's important for these guys to know what it feels like to understand yeah. this kind of win in advance or you know the rounds of the playoffs. Yeah, I think it, it shows 
process. Uh, who's ready for the moment? Sam Mayer has proven last year and this year that, you know, these, you know, getting to those must-win situations, the moment's not too big for him. Now to go and take that next step and finish it off and be a part and see if he can win a championship. And once again, A.J. Allmendinger at 42 years old, uh, the elder of the eight drivers all the way down to Jesse Love, who's the youngest at 19. So now, with three races until we get to Phoenix, has someone stepped out and shown that they could be the leader in this championship hunt? Well, I'm going to look at a team. Junior Motorsports put all four cars inside the top six. That's the first time it's ever happened here at Las Vegas. So if that's the case, then why not them? Why Maybe it is Sam Mayer or Justin Allgaier. or maybe the the speed as an organization takes a little of that pressure we talk about off the driver if the car drives good but to answer your question other than that performance i don't know i think all eight could really do it to be quite honest they could but i'm going to look at chandler smith i think his recent run you heard about his top fives everything i think that he has the ability to either point his way in or win one of these three races to move on so again tomorrow it will be brandon jones who is not a playoff driver who will lead the field to the green flag, but Junior Motorsports looking very strong here in qualifying today from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Again, coming up next on USA, it's WWE Friday Night SmackDown. Practice qualifying complete for the Xfinity Series. And in the end, it was Cole Custer who is the fastest of the playoff drivers, but ultimately Brandon Jones wins the poll for tomorrow's Xfinity race here from Vegas.